right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. We made it. We made it. We're at the end of the week. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. What a beautiful morning it is. Um, also, what a delicious breakfast for those who had for croissants. It's really, really, really good. Um, welcome. Uh, this is Creative Mornings London. Who here has never been to Creative Mornings before? Oh, Ooh, wow. newbies okay. are in the house. Lots of new faces. Okay, welcome. I am Al. I'm Kristen. It's nice to see all of you this beautiful morning. And we are Creative Mornings London. Um, and Creative Mornings is a breakfast lecture series that happens in a whole bunch of different cities all around the world. It started 14 years ago in New York. Um, and uh, actually, just this morning, 68 different cities are having their Creative Mornings. So a few hours ago, Hong Kong and Singapore finished theirs. As we speak, Munich, Vienna, Paris, and Antwerp are having their events. And in a few hours, we'll have Philadelphia, Austin, uh, Guatemala City, and later Honolulu in Hawaii. So all of these cities are having their Creative Mornings. And we are spread across 238 cities um, in 69 different countries. Uh, and there are different interpretations of the events all around the world. They do their own thing. But we are united by a few common things, which is a manifesto. And that manifesto says everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We're here to support you, celebrate with you, and encourage you to make the things that you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We believe in face-to-face -face connections, in hugs and high fives, in learning from each other. We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose, confident that they will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities all around the world. Everyone is welcome. So that's the manifesto that unites all of these cities all around the world. And then the other thing that unites the cities is a theme. And this month's theme was chosen by the city of Honolulu in Hawaii, uh, and it is native. So a little bit more about that later on. But in the spirit of native, uh, we have such an international group of people here in the room. We have people who are visiting us from Saudi. We have people who are here from Greece. Uh, and so turn to your neighbor, say hello, find out what, they, what their name is, and with your neighbor, if you can share something that is in your native language, whether that's English or something else, your favorite proverb or favorite word or favorite saying in that language. I'm Sashank. All right. I feel like we've got a lot of different languages, lots of different expressions, idioms, some kind of proverbs in different languages, which is really exciting. I'm not going to make people say them. Um, but yeah, hope you met someone new. Hope you learned something new. Uh, and yeah, welcome. So uh, with Creative Mornings, we are uh, very thankful because this is a labor of love. Uh, we all do this as volunteers. We kind of run on zero budget, so we rely on people to sponsor us and partner with us. So a massive thank you to Samsung for hosting us. Thank you. Big round of applause for Samsung. <laughs> and Samsung is open uh, for people to kind of co-work after here if they want to hang out. So once we're wrapping up, you can hang out. You can speak to the team at the back, uh, and they can tell you all about that. Um, and also, we are partnering with Natalka Design. Natalia is right there. Hi, Natalia. <laughs> Uh, and she illustrates our talks, so she's doing a live illustration of the talk, which we will share at the end of the talk with, uh, on the screen of what that looks like. So we're very, very excited with these beautiful visuals. Um, and thank you to the team. We are a team of six people uh, that put this on, so thank you to the team for, for uh, putting this on. So Mustafa, Kristen, Charlotte, Anya, myself, and Mesa. Woo. Yay! <laughs> yes. Ooh, now I have the clicker. Um, and also, just a special shout out to our beloved Mustafa, who each month gives us a great themed photo. Which, could you tell us a little bit more about this, sir? Well, shame I didn't come up with a very good theme for, na for Native, but in case you didn't know, my heritage is Somali, because I accidentally wrote fun on it. <coughs> the, the illustration, however, is, well, <coughs> sometimes I do, my name's Mustafa, and I'm also an illustrator, not just a communicator, the guy in the front of the who does take your names with, with the labels and stuff like that, yeah. <coughs> so I do I do monthly illustrations based on themes and celebrations like Valentine's Day, but I came up with a very good character called the Valentine's Day Imp, 
all he do is spread love to everybody, just like, just like, just like, the, just like the traits from Cupid or anything like that. <coughs> well, this is what the Valentine's Day imp does for a living, af before and after Valentine's Day. He does it every minute of the year. It loves him. It loves itself, and it loves it more, just like the dialogue. Thank you so much. I like this reframe. Like, it's not just a Hallmark holiday. We've got to love ourselves, too. So thank you for that. So now that we're getting back to the theme of native, um, when we were thinking about, like, you know, native and being in such a diverse city like London, we were thinking, hmm, like, what does native mean here? What do the plants look like? But then we were like, you know what? We're actually in a really cool space right here that takes on an entirely new meaning of what native actually means, as in native technologies. And so we were like, hmm, what brilliant being could we talk to in this beautiful thing? And we were thinking of Creative Morning's finest. You might have seen him in the crowd many times before, but we just wanted the lovely Alistair Leverton to come and speak with us. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. How are we? Good. You're more morning people than I am. Um, that's great. I'm like a creative evening kind of guy. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, so when I had my heritage, it, it's always like a complicated question. Um, who agrees with that? Like, is it? Yeah, a couple of people. I think it was easy, straightforward. Um, for me, I'm dual heritage. Um, so my mum is from Zimbabwe, and my dad was from uh, the UK. Uh, I am a product of a, a global relationship. Uh, uh, ooh, thank you. Hello. Um, and so, yeah, I guess I am native to here. Is anybody not native to here? Fantastic. Uh, I will let the FBI know. Um, so, yeah, it's like 12 hours. Zimbabwe, for those who don't know, is literally practically in the middle of this picture as well, which was quite cool because it was the first image on Google. It's probably like a really famous image. M makes my job really easy. Um, so, yeah, we're all native to the world. I guess that's what connects us. Um, just as a little bit of background, I actually work here at Samsung uh, KX. This is my day job, but I'm a bit more nervous because I kind of feel like I'm in front of creative morning people. It's like not my usual thing. Um, so that's my full name. This is what I do in my, as, my, as my work time. I do talk in front of the camera, but it's so much different in front of an audience. Um, so Alistair Simbarash Leverton, uh, it's a Zimbabwean middle name. Uh, it means power of God. My mum really wanted to kind of give me that, that motivation to, um, in a religious background as well, to kind of go and achieve my goals. Uh, Leverton's like a UK village um, from kind of the middle of the country. I'm from Nottingham originally. Anybody been to Nottingham? Oh, wow, okay, like quite a few people. So Nottingham, England, by the way, not any other Nottingham. Cool. Um, so I'd like to know what digital native means to you. Um, if anyone wants to raise a hand and share what it means to them, if they have any strong feelings, or maybe actually in the spirit of community, could I ask for us for 30 seconds just to turn to your neighbor and just kind of carry on that conversation? Maybe just one sentence summarize what native means to you and I will wait.
All right. Awesome, guys. Cool, thank you very much. So, I love the amount of conversation that's going on and in the spirit of Creative Morning, it's more about community. Um, I was very conscious of coming up here and telling everybody what native means, especially in a city like London. It seems a little bit of a, of a paradox almost when we're all from somewhere, um, we all come from different places and I've told you about my background already. Would somebody mind sharing a view of, of what uh, native meant to them? I can give you the microphone, or not, depending on what you like. One hand. You, sir, you're the kindest person in the room. <laughs> uh, okay, we were discussing as you re uh, requested, and, and we think it's, it's native, it's related to what you bring with yourself, uh, as it is part of yourself part of uh, your, your blood. When you are not native, you have to invest so many effort and time to become a native or fake it sometimes. Uh, so I think it's something that it's, it belongs to you. It's, it's, you can require it, but, uh, but it's, it's something that it belongs to you. Thank you, belonging, summarized in a word. Anybody else disagree, agree, something different? Let's do this, let's get on the run. Not disagree, just an additional thing. We were saying like, so I was saying I think maybe even millennials are sort of digital natives, because we sort of grew up with no internet and then we got the internet and then we learned how to use it and like, you know, master it. Um, but then she was bringing up interesting points about digital natives, like the term digital native and it being very exclusionary, right? Like we yeah, I think we were just talking about how there are a lot of people who are uh, from digital, or particularly with digital natives who maybe haven't had the resources to buy like digital things. Um, so we're just talking about the exclusion part of it. Nice, I like that. Anybody else? Any other meanings? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I'm going to come over to you in a sec. Hi there. So um, as a as a kind of scientist, we went back to the Big Bang theory. <laughs> And we kind of thought that being native is about us all coming from the same big plate of soup. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of all connected and we're all native to that big soup kind of melek. I should have just got like a giant galaxy instead of the world. Should have gone right back, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, it's a really good point and I agree with all of them so far. This is thanks to our group because it was a consensus. <laughs> um, native to us is something that's embedded within us. And when you come at it from a technology standpoint, a native iOS app comes with the phone. Mm -hmm. When you think about a person, the person's nature is embedded, whereas you may then learn to adapt that nature to something. So native is what's embedded within. That concludes my talk. Uh. <laughs> Awesome. Any, anybody else want to add to that? That was cool. Joya. Um, so we had a conversation around language because I'm not a native speaker of English. So, and this is something that sometimes you get asked or you need to tell people. Um, so there is an angle of um, your heritage and the way you think about things and the way you try to blend with native speaker, but at the same time, retain your individuality and your um, story. Is that right? We had a conversation. And then I for s that was the conversation. <laughs> and then and then we moved towards food for some reason, but maybe <laughs> because I'm Italian, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> He's Italian and I'm Bengali, so we're both lovers of food. <laughs> food is the one great unifier. <laughs> we all need it. Um, I love food too. Uh, <laughs> and talk. Um, so yeah, uh, fantastic. Native means a lot of things. I think we can all agree on that. 
Um, it has different meanings. I'm gonna go on to the next slide. Obviously, I work at Samsung. I'm a tech guy. I asked ChatGPT to do this for me. Um, what does asking a robot what native means to it was kind of like, or a large language model. Um, the term native can carry different meanings depending on the context. And well done, everybody. You, you, you got all of them. Um, cultural, about belonging to the universe. I actually put, I'm a citizen of the world as well as dual heritage. Uh, and then I was like, no, I'm also online offline as well. So um, does anybody kind of identify as a millennial or and, and in, in, in those terms? A millennial doesn't identify as a millennial, so that's cool. Um, yeah, I guess we are all, all natives of somewhere and recognize it in some way. Um, obviously, I'm gonna talk about the technological understanding of being a, uh, like a digital native. So thank you for that segue. And I wanna start the story in 1989. I kind of told you about my mom and my dad, but I didn't tell you that they actually met because my dad worked in IT uh, and he was actually on a, on a business trip working for the largest computer company at the time. So 1989 was actually the birth roughly of the, the home PC. Did anybody have one of these? Okay, well, I'm gonna age you all by the end of this and guess your, guess your date of birth. Um, so yeah, 1989, basically my dad's house, um, they split up, but when I went to my dad's house, it was just wall to wall. Some people have like pictures on the wall. He just had like computers, different kinds of computers, keyboards, mice, circuitry. It was like the matrix, but um, I loved it. He kind of like taught me, got that interest in tech started as well, so credit him for that. So 1989, birth of the home computer. 1999, do you remember where you were? Um, so everyone spent a year panicking about the end of the world. A lot of kind of end of the world theories were abounding. The banks will fail, food supplies depleted, etc. Stock market crash. Um, this could be this morning's newspaper, honestly, but um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Domino effect will cause a worldwide depression. Um, but there was the, the computer crash of the millennium. And it, I remember the time, like um, being you know, 10 years old, something like that, and thinking, oh, it's all gonna, it's all gonna kick off. Like, we're, we're, we've got fireworks to celebrate this new millennium, but it's like, we're all gonna die. It's not great for a kid. Um, but there was that idea that things are changing. Um, the idea that we are no longer just offline beings, we've kind of got this technological world is changing us as well. So that was the, uh, the year 1999, 2000. It was all good in the end, I'm sure. If you remember it, were you really there? Um, did anybody have one of these? Yeah, yeah. We called it the Crackberry um, <laughs> because it was so addictive. And little did we know that was a kind of a sign of the times of where we were going in terms of digital well-being or lack thereof. So, um, you know, Blackberry, um, I'm not meant to say that. Uh, other brands, not <laughs> Samsung related. Uh, <laughs> um, kind of got us all connected together. Uh, we were instant messaging one another and it was really a time where you could really connect to people on, without having to be face to face. Um, and that was an amazing thing. I think this, this digital time was really a sign of global community, global connectivity. 2019, Samsung KX opened, uh, and I got my job here. I'm now a trainer. I make online content about amazing products that you should check out over here. Um, but it was all about the latest and greatest innovations, uh, and I was really excited by it because we had things like 5G, and people hadn't heard about it, and it was this new technology or, um, that people were maybe afraid of. We, we talked about it in terms of educating people about, about the benefits of it. And it wasn't just 5G, it was like virtual reality, augmented reality, the metaverse, um, AI, of course. Um, and that brings us to like 2024. As you came in, you might have seen our um, Galaxy AI is here. So there's the brand new, I wasn't paid to do this, but brand new phone, uh, S24 Ultra with um, AI included. And that's kind of democratized AI. Uh, who's using AI in their workspace? Can I just see, can I get an idea? I'm gonna go off this, can I get some of these, what are they using it for? If wh Whoever put their hand up, could you just do it again? No, come on, <laughs> there we go, yeah. Could you share what you're using AI for? 
Um, I mainly use it, I use Mid Journey for image generation and um, kind of um, quick mood boarding and things like that. Uh, one more? Come on, guys. Yes. Okay, two more. Uh, we're using Firefly for image generation. Image generation and person at the back. Um, I use Descript to edit content. What content are you editing? Uh, podcasts, so video, text, anything, you know. How long have you been using it for? For about 18 months, I think. A year and a half, cool, thank you. So yeah, future ready, bigger, better, faster, awesome. Um, a year and a half, so that was like, what, 2017, 2018? No, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, creative evening kind of guy. Um, but yeah, you get the point, I think. So technology is moving at this, this um, accelerated pace. Um, and AI is something that I believe is almost out of the bottle now, it's this genie. Um, but also there's many metaphors around there of it being something that you teach. Um, it, it's, a, it's like a baby, it's like at the moment it's just coming out with gobbledygook. Um, and you're like, oh, this is rubbish, it's never, like, why, how's this gonna benefit me, like, as a freelancer, as a business, as somebody who just enjoys playing around with computers as I was in uh, 1999. But like a, like a child, it, it grows up, um, it learns, and like a parent, you want it to kind of be cleverer than you and be more successful than you. And I kind of think that's a good metaphor for AI. Um, you kind of can teach it and it will get cleverer, um, but also if you teach it bad morals, it's gonna be a bad adult. Um, scary. Is, who's scared by AI? I'm not gonna come over and ask why. Um, who's excited by AI? Good, oh, nice. Um, who's both scared and excited by AI? <laughs> okay, everybody, so everyone has an opinion. Um, so of course I then went back and asked ChatGPT uh, to come up with what 2029 is gonna look like uh, here in London. And yeah, this is like Creative Morning 2029, I, I hope. Um, so it was talking about, I'm not quite sure what was going on with the bus, I left it because I thought it was cute. Um, <laughs> But it, you know, ele electric, um, electric boats, everything's electric, everything's renewable, a lot of greens. Bear in mind, this is only five years, we've got a lot to be going on with. Um, but I love the optimism, and if that's one thing I want you to take away, guys, let's be optimistic, okay? Um, drone delivery as well, um, sort of self-driving autonomous vehicles, that sort of thing as well. Um, but still cloudy, we haven't sorted that problem out yet. <laughs> um, love it. So I want to ask us a few questions of ourselves. Um, of course, I'm not an expert. We're all still learning this thing, and some of you have probably been on it longer than I have. Um, but first question is, how can we thrive in a digitally native world? Just want you to think about that for a second. Then how do we preserve our digital well-being? That's something that I'm really concerned about um, as a parent of this digital future, um, that we maintain and preserve our digital well-being or get it back if we've lost it. And you can see how this curve has, has accelerated that, that need. And what's the role of artificial intelligence, in, ugh, artificial intelligence, AI, that's why we say AI, in all of this? Um, how can it help us? How can it um, make our lives effortless, more convenient, um, give us the time to do the things that we, as human beings, should be doing, creating at Creative Mornings. Big plug. Um, so, average screen time, five hours per day for the, for the average American. <laughs> My neighbor that I spoke to. <laughs> um, Mine is five and a half, I'm above average, woohoo. Um, so I actually didn't want to share this because I was so ashamed until I checked the statistics as well. Um, and I realized there's nothing to be ashamed of, we're all friends here. Um, I, does anybody know how to check their digital well-being? A few, we're all, well, most of us I think are kind of techy here. Um, anybody would call themselves digital native? No, 
who, who, no, these names. But I want to kind of use these, these phrases to signpost ideas and things. You do? I know we're talking about digital native, but what, what is your definition of a digital native? Okay, let's go back. <laughs> I didn't say, but I'm gonna go into it question by question. So um, my answer to that is digital native is somebody who grew up in the digital world. So if you were born in the year 2000, you never experienced the world without smartphones, for example. The information that you consume is all through a screen as opposed to a book, most likely, um, or through TV, computer, that kind of thing. So that's a digital native. They don't remember a world without the internet, for example. Um, my second point is that we grew up even if we didn't grow up in, in that era, we are now in that era as well. So um, online, I, I saw things like digital immigrant as opposed to a digital native. So it's people who have, who have migrated into this era. <laughs> and maybe that's probably many of us here as well. I'm kind of, even myself in a way, include that, or people of my generation for sure. Um, but people who grew up with, with technology, I would answer that question. Um, but maybe, I should open it up to the audience in this spirit of, of community before I offer my own opinions. Does anybody have strong feelings on how we can thrive? Maybe you as a community work in that sector of well-being, um, but for digitalness as well. Thank you. Tom. Hello. Uh, I reckon for me anyway, part of it is uh, about generalization in a way. Um, like if, if you imagine that the trajectory of AI is perhaps one day towards artificial general intelligence, who knows if we'll, we'll get there, but you know, it's possible, it's plausible. Um, in that sort of world, I mean, God knows what the economic shape of the world looks like at that time, but you want to kind of be, I want to be abreast of as many things as possible, uh, and able to adapt and, and shift and change rather than being stuck in a particular channel, I suppose. Thank you, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I would say that we, we need to adapt, we need to kind of learn about this thing, um, which is kind of what myself, my colleagues are doing at the moment at Samsung. Um, we really want, to, I would recommend everybody get to the grips with the basics, understand the, the basic concepts, uh, even if you don't need to want to learn to uh, get involved in the deep uh, multimodals and the language models and all of this kind of stuff, but just understand what it's doing, what's the, what's the thinking behind of it. The truth is, I think the way that they're made, many people, even the people who created it don't always know how it came to the answer, so don't think that they are super, they know something that you don't. It really is like this, this um, this genie almost, uh, and it's taking a life of its own. But if you can understand it, uh, I think that that will give you the best um, chance chances of survival, uh, <laughs> um, um, chances of adapting to it as well. Uh, I think that AI can really help us with that as well, and it, and it is doing so. Whether it's health, uh, education as well, and in those sectors that is helpful as well. Any other comments or, or thoughts as well? You, then you. So I'm not digitally native, and I didn't understand half of what you said. <laughs> um, and, and I'm so, sort of more concerned with the well-being element, and I think in my mind it's about uh, causing disruption. So how do you disrupt people from that kind of constant, um, you know, you've got five and a half hours of, of screen time. Um, and I think the best example I've seen of that, and hopefully a, a nod to the future, um, is at the uh, uh, Lego headquarters in Denmark where they have the most incredible working space. You know, they have a Zen garden and a, and a, and a creative room and a music room and a cinema. So places where people can actually disrupt their work and go and be um, creative. And I kind of wonder whether that is, you know, whether we need to physically get up and do something else uh, and actually be pushed to do that uh, in order to you know, preserve our well-being. Thank you. You there. Thank you. It kind of links to the comment there, but like being really intentional about how we're in the digital space, because I see people doing things like 
you know, going on a trip and then crowdsourcing, where shall I go next? Who shall I meet with? And uh, you lose the magic of serendipity and actually natural connections that we make. And that really concerns me. Like, that's not very human. We're not in our bodies. We're not like, there's a balance. There's a balance between things that we can learn and share, but then the natural evolution of our experience too. Thank you. Hello. Um, I work a lot with young people, and that's what comes to mind when I think about digital natives. Um, I'd love for it to be as simple as setting boundaries, and I think it's something that's already difficult for us as adults, but for young people, it really scares me that I cannot connect to how embedded the digital world is in their real world or the other way around. I can't connect with that and understand it on a deep level. And so it, I don't have an answer, but it's very concerning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your, for your uh, candidness. Hi. Um, I think the word that comes to my mind is mindfulness. Um, yeah, I think uh, a couple of years ago, I sort of stopped using smartphone for almost two years with the intention that I wanted to sort of detox because it, it was having a huge impact on my mental health and also to just put sort of the digital device where it belongs. Um, so yeah, it's that, that's what comes to my mind. It's just being really intentional about it and sort of being in touch with how, how some of these things are making you feel, I suppose, and yeah. Absolutely, thank you. Um, so really, I think it almost ties in with the, the next question. We've almost hit it on the head. We all know in, in, in uh, natively um, that how do we preserve our digital well-being? It's finding this balance between nature and reality. I, I put my heritage is online, offline, uh, dual heritage. Um, so I really f I feel that strongly uh, as well. Um, and I empathize with your, your point about the kids, the kids today, um, because I get it. Um, so I'm kind of old now, um, but I think that we should all empower ourselves. I actually talked about um, the other day in a, in a talk about um, moving from distraction to empowerment um, and how we can change our intentionality, who said that, um, towards something which, it's hard. I think the, these apps uh, and things like that have an, the algorithm has an investment in us constantly being a part of it and being plugged in. Yet at the same time, I know here at Samsung, they have a whole um, sector dedicated to digital well-being. Other companies have the same. Uh, because I think as humans, we acknowledge that it's, it's not healthy to be fully online, although there are great advantages to that, that, um, this digital age that we're living in. And um, yeah, so I would say just, just consume mindfully, try and find time in nature if you can. If you've got any advice from, from the children, I think that they, we've had workshops here actually where they are more clued on than, than we maybe give them credit for sometimes as well. Um, so I think we shouldn't be too pessimistic. Um, it's about empowering and teacher is the, is the most important job uh, in my opinion. So, um, yeah. What's the role of artificial intelligence in all of this? Throw any out to the audience. Um, so we've talked about how this, this trend has accelerated everything. Um, I saw a, let me give my credit to my girlfriend. She found the quote. Uh, um, so it was 40% uh, of time can be saved by using AI. I hope I get that right, um, roughly. <laughs> um, so the idea is that 40% uh, of time can be saved using AI. It's not something that should be making you do more work, but it actually should be freeing up your time or your thinking to more creative acts. Um, I know it's an open question when we have this, this uh, interest of the algorithm, but with that intention and with you guys who are using these tools, um, we are at the beginning. And as I said, it's, it's something that we can shape these large language models, which is essentially like the data set that the, the AI learns from, the data that it learns from is based on us. So if we practice compassion, if we practice kindness as well, that the, the language models, the AI will learn from us and then 
emulate that times infinity. Um, so whatever we give it will, is what it will get out. I think that's a great argument for life um, with humans. Even if there wasn't AI, let's be kinder to each other as well. Um, I think it's a nice point to end off, so I'll end it there. Uh, and if anyone's got any comments or questions, um, let's connect. It's a digital world, so find me online, um, all of that good jazz. But most of all, let's connect with each other here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Testing. Thank God. Um, who's the digital boomer? Me. Um, <laughs> no, come back here. I want to ask you some questions. Um, so for those of you who are new right now, this is a moment for some Q&A right now where we get to ask the digital man himself um, some questions. So if anyone has a question, yeah, let's go. I, I do have a question, yeah. Um, First of all, my question, where are your boots from? <laughs> Comfy. Um, <laughs> In 1991, the web was born, and, and we started uh, natively yeah, with HTML. What we are now, right now, what we see, what we have web standards, as we sh should call native, really, what everything runs in browser, what we see right now is a global inability to produce valid HTML. While we use tools like Wix, Foursquare, WordPress, on the other hand, we do back-end development, come up with React, all of this code generated fails validation. What can we do about that? Great question. Good question. Mm, my, I wrote in, 1999, I wrote my website in HTML, but that was because of my dad. And I think it's really important that you have those figures who promote what you're saying. Um, if I'm gonna translate your question, maybe to people who, and, and check that I've understood it to everyone else, you're basically saying people don't understand what's going on underneath the hood. And there are certain, um, when you talk about validity, it doesn't pass the checks maybe in terms of privacy and thing, things like that. Uh, they don't really understand if uh, something goes wrong, what to do about it. Um, it's a good question. We need to, the first point is we need to understand how they're working and maybe taking a quick course. I can share the ones that, that I've been looking at as well. Um, but I also know the reality is, is that people don't want to learn how to code. My mum runs a business. She wants, she wants the website for the business. She doesn't want to learn how to make a website. Uh, that's the reality. Um, so I don't want to say that there's an easy answer for it, but I'd be open if you have got a good answer um, to put it back and empower you. Um, and, and seriously, I would, I would if, you, if you've got an idea, I don't think enough people are talking about that, uh, truthfully. I don't think enough people are talking about the ethics of AI, um, but I don't also think enough people are talking about the positive things that it can come up with as well. Ooh, any other questions right now? My question for you is, um, what was the first piece of technology or software that you used that you were like, I'm hooked on technology now? We've been talking a lot about video games at my office for context. And Say I that again. Yeah. We were talking about video games a lot at my office recently, and um, that's not necessarily technology, but it inspired many. Um, I'm gonna date myself, like MSN was cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I liked MSN, um, but on, I used to, like Microsoft Paint, I, li I just like drawing. Um, I'm, I'm not a huge gamer, but I like, I, I've always been like a creative, I like to draw, so moving into tech, I, I kind of always saw tech as something which would make my life easier for the things that I was doing anyway. Um, so Microsoft uh, Paint, and then it came, went on to, um, uh, like Photoshop or, or like free source versions of it as well. Um, yeah, so that was my first brush and then I made my website with <laughs> dad's help. Yeah. Okay, we have time for one more energetic hand up and then we'll go on from here. Um, do you use any sort of digital tools to maintain and manage your digital sanity? 
yes, uh, but I clearly <laughs> need to do, do better. Um, I think first you have to make that conscious attempt. So all the apps in the world, they're great, but you, you, if you don't use them, what's the point? It, it's like a, like a self-help book which you never read. Um, there are apps out there, um, but I think the digitally native apps of Samsung are great. Um, uh, but, it, but in all seriousness, they are on there. You can check your screen time, you can make goals, you can get notifications, you can actually set these apps with timers so that they turn off uh, after a certain amount of time. Um, getting a weekly progress report as well, so once you're conscious, um, oh my God, like five hours, se that's 76 hour days a year, it, it's insane. Um, I will justify, I use my phone for work and things like that, and I'm on YouTube while I'm doing things, so it's not all just screen, um, but still I think the point stands. Um, so yeah, I don't even think that you need the apps, but I don't think enough people are even going into their phones. Maybe I would encourage that today. Check the digital well-being, check how much time you're actually spending. If you're shocked or if you think it's too much, maybe set a screen time goal to reduce by something, you know, smart goal, something achievable, 10 minutes this week, just do it, something achievable. Um, don't, don't try and do too much at first, but just tracking it, I think, is the first step to be able to see what you can change as well. And that's where those weekly progress reports and those goals come into place and those timers. Cool. Did you have a question? No, yeah. Oh. No, thank you, Alistair. Oh, oh, am one, I? What? One. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, just connected to that last point, I was curious about you said five and a half hours screen time, the average American. So in the workplace, anywhere people who are using their screens from nine to five every day as part of their job and <coughs> all their personal screens on top of that. It feels like a tall order to try and get your screen time down. And uh, we, I've talked about it with some people and sort of the other people say detox, mm. but actually what they do is then they go online to find ways to detox digitally, which is sort of like counterintuitive. But I was wondering, is there anything that you do that works for you to get your time down? Yeah, um, so there, I mean, there are apps out there like Calm and things like that where people can even just YouTube, it's free. It's you don't have to pay for it. You can go and find uh, like a meditation um, out there um, and just listen to it. Um, well, yeah, different things work for different people, right? Some people like heavy rock to relax. Some people like like nature sounds as well. So I can't say there's one size fits all. Um, YouTube is free. I'm, I'm big on the things that don't cost anything. So those native apps and things that don't like subscription models, I think, which are is the trend nowadays as well. Um, for me personally, um, yeah, I, 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 I like audio books, but nothing too, like, <laughs> cerebral. Like, uh, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Sweet. Going once, I'll going twice. I'll speak to you. Well, you go. We got one more, one more, one more. Well, sure. Let's do it. <laughs> it's community mind. No, it's more expanding on what you said about the digital platforms that got you into it. But we haven't really touched on the distinction necessarily between digital as a medium as opposed to the content itself. And a lot of talk is like, you know, digital well being, it's being wrapped into one and we make that distinction between actually using it as a, as a as a medium as opposed to it being the all encompassing content as well and using it in that in that way when, you know, you you kind of found your way through it through creating something. So it's I don't know whether or not there's something in there in terms of how you how you find that balance as opposed uh, the way you sort of frame digital as opposed to being an encompassing thing as a content as a, as a piece of medium as well yes no, <laughs> yeah. no thank you um are you uh, i'm not sure i quite understand the question yeah um, Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's a great point. 
actually. Um, I would agree with that. You don't have to do everything on the screen. You can do things offline. And I th the point as well of AI is actually going to help you save time to do things, spend more time in nature, uh, meditate, whatever it is, those things. Chill with friends as well. Um, I even had a last slide. I even forgot it, but it was a nice everybody relaxing as well. Um, no, good point. I'll stop. <laughs> no, because uh, you're amazing. I love you. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. Um, so give it up to Alistair. <laughs> um, we'll get to this. Um, so just remember that Alistair actually works here and that you can talk to him afterwards as well. He's the best and we're really happy to have seen Creative Morning's Finest come here. Another part of Creative Morning's Finest is um, attributed to Miss Natalia for Natalka Designs who um, actually live drew the entire uh, chat and so we get to see what native is in both of our heritage and also in our technology usage as well. So thank you. Um, yeah.